Well, good afternoon, Amsterdam. Um, thanks a lot for joining this talk. And it's, thank you for the nice introduction. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. So why are we placing today um, the challenges of the ramp up for IoT devices? Well, to my person, first, I studied electrical engineering. I have about 10 years of experience in microelectronics and Currently, I am the business developer at Miromico, where we focus on designing, but also ramping up IoT devices. Not only, to that I will come later on. So as you can see, uh, my slogan for today is, so the electrical, uh, electric light did not come from uh, the continuous improvement of canals. We set on innovations and um, my talk should not be an excuse for our clients that we cannot deliver on time because we have challenges in ramp up, but it should give a clear insight of what problems we have in our daily life, but also it should give, let's say, um, a hint that the demand is growing on a daily basis, and we have to find clever ways how to find solutions for that. So Miromico is a design house with three departments. We do chip design, we have a department for embedded design, and we do also electronics for the Internet of Things. Sensors as well as gateways, not especially, not only LoRa, but LP1 devices. And I've listed already uh, some names, the logos of the supplier, distributor partner, manufacturing and assembly partner on that slide because, well, once you have the products, you need to distribute it. And the supply of these devices or the supply of the components for these devices, that's also something that you need to take care from the beginning. And from the other side, the manufacturing partner and assembly partner, it's also pretty important. But to that I come later on during my talk. So what's the current situation in the market? We are talking about big numbers and uh, since I have a background in microelectronics, for us we have the Moore's law in microelectronics. So is it time to define a Moore's law for the IoT devices? Well, what we see is we have uh, lots of project-based IoT devices or IoT projects that goes in these devices that goes into these projects and the demand is slowly coming and we have to prepare for the demand properly. So how do we do that? And the second question that we need to answer today is, um, or that we need to understand is, so how do we know anyway that it is hard, but how to plan it properly that we can have a scale up of different products. So that's actually where we differentiate us or this industry from the mobile phone industry where we had a single device that was highly integrated and went into mass production. Now we have a set of sensors or a set of devices that goes to different markets, different applications and need different setups actually in order to uh, ramp it up properly. And for that we need a kind of an approach so at Miromico currently we are not focusing on a single, let's say, application in this sense or sensor. We have different clients, but also some standard OEM uh, devices. But what we see is if you go to different markets, especially new markets, um, the coverage is pretty important, especially LoRa one. Um, there we have a gateway and also some prominent clients in the background. And for us as a Swiss company, we are pretty fortunate that uh, within Switzerland, uh, so the Swiss, the national uh, communication uh, company, Swisscom and Swiss Post, they build a national uh, uh, LoRaWAN connectivity. And we can do all the proof of concepts of our devices in the Swiss market. So the key message of that slide is actually no LP1 solution or LoRa1 solution without a gateway. So our focus is not only on sensors, the ramp up of sensors, but also on sensor devices. And what it was the first step that we did actually in order to push the ramp up? Our focus was to build the key components 
of the devices. So we had a modular approach. This modularization which differ, with different building blocks. So for the lower one uh, sensors, we need kind of uh, modules. From different suppliers, we don't only set on a single supplier because in the end we have big markets that we want to serve and for the gateways, similar problem. And on the sensor side, so I put the sensors that on this slide that are currently being prepared for mass production. They go in the different verticals, like with Swiss Post, we have projects in retail delivery. We go in facility management systems with different devices like uh, feedback buttons, uh, display-based feedback buttons. We have uh, door and window counters. Um, we do predictive maintenance with AFNET in the background, providing part of the technology where we help them to do the ramp up of the project. We go in agriculture and not least but last also do need to ramp up the gateways in order to provide the coverage. And how does it look like actually? So we can throw a lot of sensors and hardware around but if there is not uh, an application for it, it's pretty useless. And one prominent client of us, or all these prominent clients of us actually, and one of them that I've been presenting on this slide is ISS, uh, the facility management services, where they use the service buttons for service on demand, and there are proof of concepts running that they can really show you can save cost within the uh, traditionally cost structures in that uh, company. And the important part, again, we have to bring the data out of the sensor. We have to build kind of gateways, and we have to bring the data out through cellular in the end on the clouds. And in order to push the production, we have the modules. So we have to set in the future more and more on these modules to reduce the complexity, but also to bring the verification of these sensors and distribute it on different layers of technology. And the famous, let's say, um, plot that we see on daily basis, the demand is increasing, we have to deliver, and uh, our distributor is pushing from one side, the clients on the other side. We need to bring hardware in ramp up. And how to make that happen, that's actually the magic in the IoT business in the end. Because what we see is in less than two years, IoT will surpass the cellular, but not with one single device. We will have several devices. And for each of them, we need to kind of bring the process to make a standard process. So what's our understanding of production ramp up, especially for IoT sensors? And which phases do we know? So we have to start with MVP. And our goal is to bring it into mass production. And the important part in ramp up for us is the, the time. The time, because by the end of the day, we have to create money. And the, it, we have to create interesting business cases. And for this and that reason, we have to shorten the ramp up time. And I will show later in the process of my talk how much challenges we have during this process with one specific product. But we can directly um, take the information that we have on one product and relate it to all other products in IoT. And from an investor point of view, they're always interested in the return of investment. So the shorter we go into the markets, especially the global markets, and they bring the products out, the larger the margin will be. And the real challenges or the challenges are also kind of related to the trends of today. Because the trends of the, in the consumer electronics, currently they are going actually in a different way than what we have in IoT. Consumer electronics is getting more and more 
shortening life cycles. So we are preparing a ramp up for a product that will non exist in probably less than a special um, time window. Then we have a rising market fragmentation. And the, the rapid technological changes, these updates of uh, ASICs in the background or software, all that needs to be also taken care of in this ramp up procedure. And we talk about this devilish triangle of ramp up where we have um, the time to market, time to volume, and time to quality on the three axes. Well, whatever product you have, you have to uh, foresee that you can only have one corner of that triangle. So either you focus on one of them, and in the end, you have to optimize and go more or less in the middle of that triangle. And in IoT, what we see is you have a diverse set of sensors. You could also focus on one sensor in your company, let's say, but we as Miromic or most all other hardware suppliers in the market, they want to cover as many use cases as possible, and for that and other reasons, uh, we also see that there is a small, currently, the big numbers are not coming yet, so we have to uh, deliver in small numbers. And the problem there is that whatever you define for that specific product, the other client does not want it. They want it, the one client wants a red enclosure, the, the other one wants a black enclosure, so there is a different interest in whatever application the product goes in. And IoT is not mainstream yet, and the goal of us in the background, uh, the hardware suppliers, let's say, we would like to make it mainstream. And one specific product that we have in the ramp up that creates a lot of difficulties, which actually is the main building of the whole setup, that's the gateway. We see that we have different complexities on the hardware side. We have the delivery or the supply of the critical components. We have to foresee that, or we have to have the, the right partners in the background to do that with us. We have the coupling effects on the antenna, especially since we have LoRa and cellular at the, in the same device. We have mechanical problems. We, as in, uh, electrical engineers, we need to rely on the competences of our partners in the market. And in software, it's going in a similar direction. Actually, if you design, or as a design house, going into design of such product, so there are several things that you need to foresee. You need a partner for enclosure design and manufacturing. For the supply of the components, you need another partner. You cannot directly buy the components from the suppliers themselves. Then the PCB manufacturing tells another story, and you have to bring all these different competences in-house in order to provide the capability to go into these millions numbers of devices. Assembly and verification and warehouses and distributions, these all belong to the new capabilities that you have to have in-house. Then the next question is, okay, we solve the hardware problems, what's happening next? You have different software supplier platforms, so what is next? We need a device which should be modular enough to run all these firmwares, Actility, L'Oreal, the Things Network, the Things Industry, and so on, and new are coming on the market. And next to that, as a hint, don't forget the additional cost in hardware design. So we have, as an example, if you do MVPs, you have to foresee that you have minimum order of quantity of above 3,000 devices that you need to buy. Then for the enclosures, you can decide to go with off-the-shelf devices, standard um, enclosures, or you need to pay the tool sets. And it's also the verification and the robustness of the product, so the re reliability of the product that needs several steps with infill tests with clients, the certification fees, then on software you have um, similar cost structures that come up. So how did we do that? So we have all this set of problems in the field, and we knew that or some of them we knew and some of them we learned by time. And as Miromico, we included 
the big manufacturer in background, also the enclosure designer and uh, manufacturer, and also the assembly guys. A table, before we design a new product, we bring all the competences at the table and let them make the decision with us and such that we avoid all mechanical problems in the field. And uh, the interesting thing is also whenever you build a device, you need the feedback from the distribution partner. Is there a market demand? You need the forecast, maybe as a letter of intent that you know which numbers. And if the business case makes sense at all, in this sense, uh, in this application. So to conclude my talk, I would like to give some takeaways. Every IoT application of today needs uh, different components, has a different, goes into different environments, different countries. As an example, Switzerland, with Swisscom in the background, uh, building and the national coverage, we know that the platform in background is Actility. So our gateway should be able to work with the Actility software. If our gateway goes through Afnet to Germany or to new markets, so where, whatever new market we target, we have to foresee that our gateway is able to run that, uh, firm, uh, that software and that the solution in the end is robust enough. But this is also the same problem, not only with uh, LoRa, but also with all other LP1 uh, connectivities, especially on the sensor side, we have to foresee, is there a LoRa1 coverage? And if not, then we cannot enter that market because there won't be any demand yet. And that makes actually indoor applications for us in the first step very interesting because we can provide the gateways with the sensors and build local ne area networks. And later in the process when the standardiz standardization comes and IoT gets more mainstream, this will solve lots of our problems. But we have to foresee this now. And we have to make the ramp up time as short as possible. We have to cancel whatever uh, refinements that would be necessary in the design process. And the best that can actually help us to foresee or to avoid these kind of problems is to have the, the right set of partners in the background. Um, it needs a lot of convincing in the beginning but with the right mindset, with the right partners, having the same goals that we have or we had in the past, um, this is the essential part to ramp up your products. Thank you very much.